Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker, and today is day 90 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and celebrating myself. So, yay for day 90! 10 days to go. Um, <laughs> loving the countdown here. Um, anyway, so for today 90, I decided to celebrate extremes because I have probably mentioned in multiple videos and will probably continue to mention in future videos that I, um, I swing from one side of the pendulum to the other. I always do that, you know, one extreme to the other. I cannot seem to find that um, happy little middle ground. So <laughs> extremes is my lifestyle, is my lifeline. Um, sometimes it makes me think I'm bipolar because of that. I don't know. I've never been diagnosed with any of these random things that I see, um, except maybe the PTSD and the depression and anxiety. I know those are all ones I have. <laughs> lots of fun fabulous things for myself but i also know i have this um black and white thing in my head in my brain this all or nothing idea where i either have to do everything or i can't do anything and it's um and i have something in my eye eyelash <laughs> there we go all better sorry um randomness i thought i tried to get all that stuff out before i do my videos i apologize anyway <laughs> if i would edit videos this is something i would edit out of my video but Anyway, back to extremes. I do the extreme of things. Um, I, yeah, I just, I do. I, I have this black and white world, this all or nothing where I have to do everything or I do nothing. Um, I think I learned that growing up where it was kind of like my biological dad was very much like that, that if we didn't do things his way or we didn't do it, whatever the time frame was, then that's it. We don't get to do it. We're done. That's it. It's like a one and a done. You got one chance to get it right. And if you get it wrong, that's it. You can't do it again. <laughs> There's no second chances with that man. Um, so I grew up believing that I didn't have second chances, that I had one shot to get it right. And if I was too scared to do it, I didn't get a second chance. Um, even my grandfather, who I love very much. I was always a grandpa's girl. I loved him so much. But even when I was a kid and I was riding a horse, um, it was going around a turn and I kind of felt like I was tipping off of it. So I jumped off a pile of hay. And of course my little sister was on the back and um, she was probably like one and I was probably like six at the time. <laughs> so it was not, you know, good for me to do that. So thankfully my grandpa caught my sister and then he was like, you know, you need to trust me. I said, he's like, what did you do that for? And I'm like, cause I thought I was going to fall. So I jumped and he was like, you need to trust me that you're safe. And I'm like, okay, we'll do it again. He's like, no, cause now I can't trust you. So he wouldn't let me try again, which I think is sad. Um, but it kind of reinforced the idea that in my mind, that I only have one shot at something. And if I don't get it right, I can't do it again. Um, so the, the extreme basically you have to be perfect or um, you're nothing basically, <laughs> um, or you just can't do anything. So um, I was like, if I wanted to do something, I had to do it perfectly. And if I didn't do it perfectly, then I just, I'm not allowed to do it. And this is something I, um, I struggle with throughout my life. There was also, you know, like the house would get really messy and then it was like, okay, we're going to clean the entire house all in one day, which we would do. And it was really exhausting. You spend the entire day cleaning the entire house, like me and all of my siblings. And then we wouldn't clean the house again for like a month or two. And then it would be like all at once. We have to do everything. And then, you know, that was it. So you'd spend the entire day just you know, cleaning up a month's worth of mess instead of doing a little bit at a time. There was never that idea um, when I was growing up that you could do a little bit. You had to like do it all at once. If you got behind on homework or had something you had to do, you had to catch it all up. You had to stay up all night and finish whatever it was you had to do. Um, it was always, <laughs> which I think is probably part of why I procrastinated things. I put them off until I was like super stressed and I was like, okay, now I have to do all of it. And I've had all this time to do it. And the teacher breaks it down. It's like, okay, if you do this and this and this week and this week and this week and this day, then the project will be ready at the end of the semester or the end of the quarter or whatever it is. And I'm like, cool. The end of the quarter's around and I haven't done anything. And I had to do it all the night before <laughs> because that's, that's how my brain worked. That's how I functioned. It was, you know, you, you just do it when you could do all of it and you didn't do part of it. You had to like finish it all at once or you just didn't, didn't do it. <laughs> and of course you lose sleep and whatever else it takes in order to finish whatever the project is. And of course it's never perfect because you put it off like forever. And of course nothing in life is really perfect, which so is the illusion of being perfect. So then of course I was, you know, 
always less than perfect. So um, this is me and my my extremes where I think it's again perfect or nothing. There's not an in between, <laughs> all or nothing to do everything or can't do anything. Um, it's just that weird weird mentality for me. Um, and I, I do that. I swing from being, okay, I'm really happy and I'm ready to do everything. I'm, I'm Wonder Woman and I am going full force and I'm doing everything to I am completely exhausted and totally depressed and discouraged and I'm doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I literally have days like that. Like I swear, like um, I had a day just a couple of days ago where I was just like, okay, I am super depressed and despondent, discouraged, whatever. I can't do anything. I can't get off my couch. I'm done. There's nothing I can do. And then the next day I'm like, and now I'm Wonder Woman and I'm just going to do everything that I haven't been doing. And I'm just going to clean my kitchen and I'm going to read my scriptures and meditationals. I'm going to write in my journal. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make like three videos in one day. I'm going to just go crazy and do everything, um, which I did. But then I was up really late and then I was really tired and then it's just blah, 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 blah. And then I'm back to the, I'm so tired. I don't want to get out of bed and do anything because I overdid it the day before. I just, I do that. And, or I'll push myself for three or four days and I'm like, yes, I can do this. And then my body's like, oh my gosh, we are so done of doing everything because we just don't have, I haven't built up the stamina and the energy to do all the things that I think I can do in a day. And at some point in my life, I was able to do all of those things in a day. And hopefully at some point, in the future, I will be able to do all of those things in a day again, but I am not currently in a position where I can do everything. Um, I don't know that I've ever actually been able to do everything in a day. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And sometimes all the things that I want to accomplish in a day, it's just really exhausting. Like I always have this list that's way too long. That's way too unrealistic. I always have these ginormous unrealistic expectations. And then when they don't work out, I'm like, I failed. But I didn't just fail. It was an epic fail. It's always an epic fail. It was never <laughs> just failed. It was an epic fail. Um, or, or, you know, I finally did something and I'm like, yes, woo, I am awesome. I like, I remember going bowling one time I was uh, visiting family in another state and I went bowling with my aunt and, um, my cousin, I think, and I got a strike, which I don't get strikes very often, but I was like, yes. And I started jumping up and down and screaming. I'm like, yes, I got a strike. This is so awesome. The whole bowling alley is kind of like turning and looking at me and they're all like mumbling and grumbling, like what the heck? And my aunt is like, oh good. I think that's great. You should cheer your cheer on your successes. Everybody should be that excited about getting a strike. It didn't occur to me that, you know, that's distracting to other people that were trying to bowl or other people that bowl on a regular basis have gotten kind of, you know, used to getting strikes so they don't think it's a big deal to get a strike they focus on the fact oh i missed a pin or i didn't get the, the spare and that's a, that's a negative thing um but i just automatically was like yes i got a strike yes i succeeded yes i am amazing but on the flip side you know got her balls the rest of the time <laughs> the rest of the night and i'm like well my score was probably still like under 100, probably in the 50s or 60s, to be honest. Um, not very good. For any of you that don't bowl, 300 is a perfect score. Um, usually, I think one or 200 in the 200s is probably good towards professional range. 250, 300 is like professional, probably. Probably um, 200s, 150, 250, whatever is probably intermediate, whatever. <laughs> anything under 100 is just beginner or like little kids that just don't know what they're doing and I teeter somewhere between 50 and 100 when I bowl so I'm not very good but I will every once in a while I get that random strike and I always get excited because I got a strike I'm like yes that's so cool I got a strike I succeeded at something so um I'm always grateful that I can do that and I think that's a wonderful thing for me to to focus on but again, I have like when I do stuff like that and I get super excited because I, I did something. I'm like, yes, I tried multiple times and I finally got it. I'm super happy. I can do that with like sports and things. Not that I play a lot of sports, but like with bowling or some things. But other things in my life, um, like maybe with my books and my writing or cleaning my house or um, work or something that just doesn't that I plan out and I think I have it all figured out in my head how it's going to work and then it doesn't work out the way that I want it to. And then I go to the whole despondent, discouraged, epic fail. My life is an epic fail. 
like for example i didn't do my um week three video on friday i waited until saturday um to do it and so i literally in my brain i was going to bed thinking epic fail epic fail i epically failed and i had to keep telling myself this is not a fail. This is not even an epic fail. I can still do the video. I am not stopping. I am not quitting. I just had a bad day. <laughs> There's nothing, there is nothing wrong. So um, I do have my extremes. And sometimes I think they can be, they can be good. Like when I focus on the positive, like I got a strike when I'm bowling and forget the fact that my score is like 59 and <laughs> I only got like one strike in the whole thing and probably most of the rest of it was gutter balls or random side balls or something. Um, pins, pins, not balls, pins, sorry, random pins that I knocked down and the rest of it's gutter balls. Just ball went in the gutter and I didn't hit any pins. Um, but I, I can focus on the positive on that and I think that's awesome. I wish I would apply that to everything else in my life. But I also think I go in there with the expectation or the knowledge that I don't play bowling. I'm not very good at bowling and I'm just going to have fun. So I have no expectation of being good at it. I have no expectation of being perfect. I have no expectation of winning the game, of beating any of the other players. I'm just going to have a good time. And when I look at it that way, I do, I have a good time. But the problem is I don't approach all of my life that way. Like I said, I approach things very black and white, very um, all or nothing. And <laughs> That is probably one of my biggest vices, one of my biggest struggles to overcome because it doesn't have to be all or nothing. I can put forth a little bit of effort. I can continue to try multiple times. It's not a one and done kind of a deal. <laughs> it's like I get more tries. I'm not, I don't have to give up on myself just because one time didn't work out or just because I had a setback or I had a bad day. And I'm learning that. And I'm grateful that I'm learning that. And I am grateful that I'm in a place right now where I am focusing on the little things that I'm succeeding at. And that instead of trying to convince myself that I have to clean my entire house in one day or do all of my dishes in one day or whatever the case may be, that I can just do a little bit every day. And sometimes if I don't do anything, it just seems like, well, my mess just piled right back up again all in one day. And I don't think it quite comes back all in one day. But um, it sometimes it feels like that. And it's like, oh, I'm not making any progress because it's like two steps you know, one step forward, two steps backwards, I think, but I'm not really making two steps backward. I think I'm doing like two steps forward and one step backward and two steps forward and one step backward. So I'm actually making progress. It's just, I don't always see it, but I'm starting to change my focus to the one step forward. And I'm starting to recognize I don't have to take giant leaps. I don't have to go on a marathon. I'm not racing. It doesn't have to be all done in one day. I don't have to change overnight. This is not... <laughs> Because my brain thinks that way. It processes that way. I imagine myself being completely different and I'm just overnight, I'm going to turn into Wonder Woman and I'm going to be able to do all of these things that I want to do. I'm going to be the person I want to be and all of my bad habits, all of the things I don't like about myself are just going to disappear and I'm going to be perfect. Um, I think that happens when you do that whole twinkling thing when, or when you die um, <laughs> after the whole judgment thing. Um, but I don't think it's, anything that I can become perfect in this life. It's just, you know, it's not possible to be perfect in this life. It's not possible to do everything every day. It just, it isn't. So my all or nothing black and white psycho extremes is not healthy. <laughs> I know that, but getting that pendulum to stop swinging, getting myself to find a balance in multiple areas of my life is a very difficult thing for me. Um, which makes me very excited about doing my um, my weeks that I'm working on of creating a healthier, happier lifestyle. Because in part of that, I am trying to focus on areas in which I can balance out my life, where I can bring it kind of into a central focus, put it somewhere in the middle and not have it be swinging from one side to the other. <laughs> so I can kind of stop the roller coaster ride where I'm going up and then screaming on my way down and then climbing back up. And I feel like that a lot of times um, with my extremes, I'm just doing that uh, up and down, up and down, up and down um, a lot. <laughs> making my, or going round in circles and giving myself, making myself dizzy and spiraling downwards. And right now I'm trying to climb up slowly and steadily and I'm going to get to the top of this. <laughs> I'm going to get to the top of whatever it is and I'm going to keep moving forward. But um I keep thinking about all these movies and TV shows as I'm saying things and I'm like, I'm not trying to steal 
binge or quote stuff. It's just what's popping out of my brain. So I apologize if you recognize any of this stuff or things that I'm doing. I'm not trying to, um, cause I think keeping moving, keep moving forward is that from the Robinson's world future cartoon thing and, uh, 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 and the, the, um, roller coaster, Phineas and Ferb. Um, <laughs> if anybody's aware of what those are, watches those. I'm not intentionally trying to steal whatever those, it's just, I've seen them so many times. <laughs> they just they say these things and I'm like, oh, that pops into my head. Again, my randomness, but it just out there, something. <laughs> not really sure what to do with that part of me. I hope you find it entertaining. Little distraction from whatever seriousness that I'm trying to say in my videos. Um, not that I'm ever very serious. <laughs> Emotional, maybe, spiritual. Um, but serious, I don't think, is something that I really am very often. It's just not, just not who I am. And I think when I'm serious, I think I just feel really heavy and depressed and just kind of like, oh, life is just a pain in the butt. So... <laughs> Yes, this is me and my my extremes from one to the other of something um, and some things I can do and some things I can't do and some things I just give up because I didn't get it right the first time. So I am learning that I can keep trying, I can keep going, and it does not mean that I have to stop. It does not mean that I have failed or that it's an epic fail <laughs> by any means. It is not the end of the world. Um, I act like it, my brain responds like it is, my body responds that way, which is really super annoying. But again, on the flip side, when something happy happens to me or I win something, I'm just like, oh my gosh, and I'm over the top, like it's the most exciting thing in the world that ever happened. I like the over the top exciting, most exciting thing in the world that's ever happened. I think it's fun. Um, <laughs> that extreme is cool. But it's the other, the flip side, when things just don't work out, that I'm just like, uh, that I just need to not go so, so far down. But I've also um, learned, not that I like it, but I know that it's true, that um, in order to, there's opposition in all things. And the more pain and sorrow and grief and things that we've been through, the more we appreciate and can experience joy and happiness and other things. So if we haven't had a lot of losses in our life, we don't understand loss. And um, then we don't understand or we don't appreciate as much um, what we have and of course we think we appreciate what we have and we're grateful for what we have um but i think it's that saying it's like so you don't realize what you've had or what you've got until you've lost it and um it's really it really is true um that the the more pain and and sorrow and suffering and things that i've had as i get healthier and happier and i find things to be joyful about the more i appreciate it the more i grasp on or hold on to those happy joyous moments because I know how precious they are. I know how rare they have been in my life. And I want to have more of that in my life. And I feel like I deserve to have more of that in my life. Um, but I also feel like I have to work really hard to have those things in my life. It doesn't come easy for me because the, the darkness and the depression and the, you know, epic failure <laughs> seem to come easy to me. The success and the happiness and the winning and the the just feeling at peace and joy, those things are, are foreign to me. And so when I have them, when I experience them, sometimes I fear them. Sometimes I'm just excited and I'm like, I want to hold on to this as long as possible. And I'm always sad when it goes away. Um, but I feel like I, I have a greater appreciation for those things. I have a deeper sense of joy. Um, and not that other people don't have a deep sense of joy. I'm not saying I'm better or different. I'm just saying that I have, I have learned that, um, you know, if I've never experienced something, I don't really know what I'm missing. I have the idea in my head, but it's not until I actually experience it that I understand it. So there's some things in life that you can read about, you can talk about, you can understand a little bit of, but, um, you know, kind of like a first kiss. You can see it on TV, you can watch your parents kiss, you can whatever, you know, but when you actually fall in love and you have your first kiss, it's it's a very different experience. <laughs> and honestly, the first time I kiss somebody, it's like, it's really kind of awkward. It's like trying to figure it out. And then, you know, then you figure it out and then it's really amazing. So <laughs> it's just, it's really, but it's, it's that process. Um, but having never been kissed before, I had no idea what I was missing. I had no idea what that was actually like or how I, body would respond to something like that. And it's like, wow, that is, you know, not quite what I, <laughs> I thought that was going to work. 
So um, it's, I think it's, it's true of things like that when it comes to, not that extremes are my favorite thing, but when it comes to experiencing life, uh, when it comes to experiencing emotions, when we have the extreme circumstances, the extreme trauma, the, those things like that, when we overcome those traumas, we get that extreme peace, we get that extreme joy, we get that extreme sense that everything is going to be okay and come through all of this stuff and we're still alive and we're still okay and it's still this, you know, wonderful place to be and um, I'm getting to where this is a wonderful place to be and I'm just, I'm really grateful and as hard and horrible as I think the, some of the experiences I've been through in my life are, they have taught me so much about myself, so much about God, so much about the atonement and my savior. They have taught me so much about um, appreciating life and appreciating what I have and learning how to take care of myself and to treat myself better. So um, sometimes I think the extremes are necessary. I know a lot of times they talk about when you have an addiction or something, you have to hit your rock bottom. You have to hit the worst possible place in your life that you can be to be willing to change. And sadly, in some cases, for some addicts, that ends up being dead because it takes that to, and then they're dead. Um, <laughs> I guess their spirit has a chance to try to make those changes, but um, it's not something they get to try to do in this life because they just weren't able to face whatever their demons are in this lifetime. Um, and for me, I know I've hit, feel like I've hit an emotional rock bottom multiple times. And, um, but getting to an emotional high is sometimes a difficult place to, <laughs> place to get to. And I would love to stay at an emotional high, but again, you can't really sit at any extreme for a long period of time. At some point you have to come back down into, you know, contentment and, <laughs> and balance and normalcy, um, because swinging back and forth can be really dizzying. And I think detrimental, confusing. It's just not, not healthy. <laughs> But like I said, some extremes, I think, are necessary, some traumas and things to teach us lessons in life and to help us to grow and to become something more and bigger and better, to understand things at a deeper level that we wouldn't otherwise understand if we didn't have those experiences in life, to appreciate what we've had, to appreciate what we receive as we move forward or regain if we've lost something and we get it back. We appreciate it a whole lot more, um, things like that. So. Um, or we realize that certain things in our life just aren't as important as we made them out to be uh, because of other experiences that happen in life. So it's just kind of, I know the extremes can be necessary, um, <laughs> but they're not always fun. Um, sometimes they can be a lot of fun. Uh, it's just kind of a, a back and forth thing, but there's always lessons in all of that. And I know at some point I may find a balance in certain areas of my life, but there may be always something that's a little off kilter because I think something always has to be a little off kilter or a little out of balance in order to make me feel uncomfortable enough to want to continue to change, to continue to grow, to continue to step outside of my comfort zone. And I live in a life, a world, a mental whatever, where I'm constantly swinging from one side to the other and trying to find a place where I feel comfortable and where I fit in. Um, but it's also a place that constantly forces me to evaluate myself and to step outside of my comfort zone, which I do a lot of in these videos. So my extremes, extremities, sometimes are actually a blessing in disguise. And they are things that help me to learn and to grow and to become hopefully a better human being, a better friend, a better daughter, a better sister, a better person. <laughs> Um, maybe not always. Sometimes I think it makes me just really bitter and angry. <laughs> I just, you know, want to isolate and hate everybody because I do the extreme opposite of, you know, <laughs> not willing to learn the lesson, not willing to change. Just, ugh. I have that extreme as well <laughs> as the one where I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. I'm going to change. I'm going to get out of whatever this is because it's making me uncomfortable. I have both of those extremes in me and I have both of those responses. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes I don't always feel like I have control over which way I respond, but um, I am learning that there are healthier responses that make me feel happier and better about myself and my choices than than ones that, you know, don't. <laughs> ones that feed my depression and, and isolate myself and, you know, make me just hate the world or myself or both. Um, but I am not in that state of mind anymore, but I think at some point I had to get to that point and I was like, I just can't live like this anymore and I have to change. So, um, hopefully moving forward, I won't have to get that 
messed up in order to be willing to get better or to see things differently or be willing to change. But um, that is me and my extremes. And sometimes it does take the extreme for God to get my attention or for my, me to be willing to change because I have to be that far out of my comfort zone to be like, all right, I want to get back to where I'm comfortable. And of course, I won't be there very long because um, I think the plan is to constantly keep growing and learning and changing so that I don't stagnate, so I don't get bored, so I don't get stuck somewhere um, and keep moving <laughs> and keep doing and keep growing. And these are all good, positive things to do. But sometimes it's overwhelming and it, like I said, spirals in the downward direction of the depression, that extreme, instead of the upward, I'm succeeding and I'm doing wonderful and life is amazing and I'm Wonder Woman and I can do anything, that extreme. And sometimes those are a bit too extreme, <laughs> but that is me and my extremes. So um, if you can relate to this, if you understand this, if you have any other insights on extremes and good, bad, ugly, whatever, um, please feel free to comment, share with me. I would love to hear other people's ideas and celebrations. Hopefully other people are choosing to celebrate themselves too. I think that's an amazing thing to do. Learned quite a lot about myself doing this process. <laughs> so um, that is all I have for these videos. So again, if you like them, you can hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think they'll like it too. I hope you have a great day full of gratitude. Find some fun, fabulous ways to celebrate yourself and maybe do some writing.